Okay, we'll start with this. It's fight week. It's fight week for one of my favorite unbeaten up-and-comers in the featherweight division, Raven Chapman. He's going to be boxing on the undercard of Joe Joyce versus Derek Chisoria opposite the ring Columbia zone, Johanna Sarabia, 22 years old, with an unblemished record of 10-0. and 0. Things are about to get very serious for Raven Chapman. And I'm not even talking about this fight. It's after this fight. So when it comes to this fight, there's next to no footage of Johanna Sarabia in action anywhere on the internet. I know because I checked. That could be for several reasons. Johanna is not with a major promotional outfit that would have aired her fights and made them available to see online. That could be one reason. Another reason could be that her handlers deliberately scrubbed the internet of any footage of her in order to maintain an air of spontaneity, an element of surprise. You can't be ready for what Johanna brings if you don't know what she brings. That's yet another reason. So a similar situation like that last week with Stevie Morgan and Amanda Serrano, there was next to no footage of Stevie Morgan in action anywhere. I know because I checked. But then like now, A look at the resume reveals what you need to know, that Stevie, like Johanna Zarabia, she had not fought anybody world level. That's the situation here. And there being a lot more to boxing than what you see on paper, even if the fighter has a winning record, it also matters. It also matters just as much who you've been fighting. Whereas with Raven, we know a lot more about Raven. We know more about her as a fighter. She fought a former champion in Jorgelina Guanini, two solid contenders in Lila Furtado and Lucy Sedlakova. We've seen Raven, we know more about her, and we like what we know. So as presumptuous as this might sound, to give Raven the edge in the Sarabia fight, not even knowing what Sarabia looks like in a match, how she fights, I'm still gonna go with Raven because I've seen situations like this before. Where yeah, fighters got a winning record, decent record, but look at who they've been fighting and there's no footage of them anywhere. And you can't be boxing at a very high level against high level fighters if there's no footage of you anywhere. Chapman on points is the way to go. I'm gonna go with Raven Chapman on points. Things are about to get very serious for Raven Chapman because about two or three days ago, Amandia Serrano announced that she has so vacated her IBF featherweight title because she doesn't want to hold up this division and doesn't want to deprive anyone of an opportunity to fight for a title while she's up there at 140. So now that title is available to fight for. In the IBF's current rank standings, Germany's own Nina Menke is ranked at number one, and Argentina's own former champion, Daniela Bermudez, is ranked at number two. Raven is ranked at number three. You figure that in the coming weeks, the IBF might order a fight between Nina and Daniela. This could break down a few ways. One way it could break down? IBF orders a fight between Nina and Daniela. But if for any reason one of them drops out, they don't want to fight, they just can't get ready, that opportunity might go to Raven, that one of them might have to fight Raven. So that's one. They might order a fight between Nina and Daniela. Two, one of them drops out, Raven gets a shot. Raven gets an opportunity, that's two. Three, the people at Queensbury pull some strings so that Raven gets the shot in her very next fight. Money talks and bullshit walks. You prick. Because the one thing Raven has that they don't have is a major promoter with a broadcast deal behind her. So if they pull some strings and jump on this, they could get Raven a title shot in Raven's very next fight. And all she has to do is take care of business this weekend, which I think she's going to. It's a third scenario that Raven gets fast-tracked to the IBF title, and that could happen. Serious, serious business at 126 pounds. Things are heating up. As of late, the conversation for Raven has centered around a Sky Nicholson fight later on this year. But this, this changes things. If Raven can become a champion before she faces Sky, that makes the fight with Sky a bigger fight. Sky is already WBC champion. She just defended her WBC title successfully, not but a little over two weeks ago. There was said to be an agreement in principle to put Sky in the ring with Raven later on this year. But since then, Tiaria Brown has emerged as Sky's mandatory challenger. So what they can do is do the fight with Sky and Tiara later on this year while Raven snags the IBF title. Then, if everybody comes through all right, you make the fight between them. The unification. That this year should not come and go without Raven Chapman seeing herself crowned 
an IBF champion. Chapman. I want to see Raven do this before she fights Sky. And I believe with Queensbury behind her, with Frank and George Warren pulling the strings, they can make it happen. Chapman. Let's get Raven this IBF title. Come on. Chapman. In men's lightweight news, Terence Crawford said, I would like to see Shakur Stevenson do exactly what he's doing now, keeping his name out there in the media. People are talking about him. Ultimately, I want to see him fight the best in the division. I want to see him unify the division and shut these guys up who are saying he's not this great fighter they think he is. I want to see those guys get in the ring with him. Me too. In spite of the criticisms levied against Shakur, that he's not a very exciting fighter, that he's a very boring fighter, I still don't view that as a reason not to fight him. That's no excuse. Because the basic idea here is to prove that you're better than he is. The only way to do that is to fight him and to beat him. You have to find a way around his defense if you are to prove that you're better than he is. You don't prove you're better than him by putting distance between yourself and that fight. All that really means is you're not sure. You're not sure if you can get to him. You're not sure that you can win. A lot of people call Darius Landi Lara a boring fighter, but Jarrett Hurts still got to him. Jarrett Hurts still beat him up. Guillermo Regandial for a very long time was called a boring fighter, but that didn't stop Vasil Lomachenko from affording him an opportunity to fight for his belt. He still fought him and he still beat him. Lerone Richards. Unbeaten until recently, a safety first outside fighter outside mover like Shakur is an outside mover and you know Steve Woodall found a way around it he beat that guy he stopped that guy it's not that you can't get to these safety first fighters you can but you have to have the cojones you have to have the balls to go in there and do the job being boring is no excuse not to fight him and so Gervonta Davis's co-trainer Kenny Ellis has indicated that they could now target Shakur Stevenson after Vasil Lomachenko pulled out of negotiations. He, Loma, is straight ducking. Hopefully Shakur won't duck. People say Tank is ducking Shakur? Let's see. Addressing that accusation, Vasil Lomachenko is straight ducking. Is that what he's doing? Well, what have you been doing for the last seven years? Because we can see what you're doing now. You're trying to rewrite history. You're trying to turn the tables on Vasil Lomachenko, and it's not working. It's not working with a lot of people because there is an established paper trail, articles, video, sound bites, and direct quotes that tell us you've been avoiding this fight for a very long time. And it seems that you waited. You waited until this guy was circling the drain and didn't want to box anymore to decide that now you want to fight. Remember a quote from Gervonta Davis himself way back there in 2019, five years ago, saying Lomachenko is at the end of his career. Well, not at the end, but he is up there in age, you know? So he's trying to make the biggest fights he can make in a short period of time, but I'm 25 years old. My stretch is a little longer than his, so we are taking our time. Wait, so you thought Loma was at the end of his career five years ago? Then what the hell is he going to be five years later? That is, where do you think he is in his career five years later when he's openly courting retirement? There's a lot of pushback on this and people aren't going to let you turn it around on him. There is far too much evidence that counts against you. You've been trying to age this guy out and it's obvious. It's even more obvious as Javante Davis is older than Devin Haney, older than Teofimo Lopez. They didn't think they were too young to fight for Solo Machenko. They didn't take their time. So why did you? Because you're a coward. Aren't you older than them? You're older than them by several years. Years. What took you so long? Now, the word around the campfire is that Vasil Lomachenko will fight again, and he could return in the first quarter of next year. That's the first three months. Vasil Lomachenko will definitely fight again, and likely in the first quarter of next year, Bob Arum has confirmed. Aram on Loma's instructions to pause negotiations for the Tank Davis fight. He doesn't want to fight for the rest of the year. It's legitimate. Stuff to do with Ukraine and his family. Whatever it is, whatever it really is, it's left the door open for Gervonta Davis to now pursue another unification match with another champion, Shakur Stevenson. And Kenny Ellis seemingly is inviting that. Do you believe him? No, absolutely not. Nope. I mean, if you want my honest opinion, this fight is not going to happen later on this year. If it does, I, I'll be happy to be proven wrong. I'll be happy if Team Davis shows some balls, shows some gusto, and prove me wrong. I invite them to do it, but I don't think they're going to. So Shakur is a free agent right now. 
He's not with nobody. He's not with Matchroom. He's not with Top Rank, which means the people at the PBC wouldn't have to deal with anybody else to make this fight, but that also means it would be solely on them to make the deal and make the fight happen. Satisfy the financial demands of the fighters, pay for the promotion, do the show, make the fight. And I don't think they're gonna do it. Aside from Vasil Lomachenko getting up there in age after they avoided him for seven years, another reason I think they finally decided they wanted to fight him? Money. There's nobody else at 135 for Javante Davis to fight at the PBC. Not at the PBC, not nobody that's gonna make for a good size money fight. There's nobody over there. They could always wait for Isaac Cruz, do a repeat with him, and they might. I don't rule that out. But the basic idea behind pursuing Vasil Lomachenko is you're at a point to where if you want to make real money, you're going to need to fight real names. Uh... Unless you want to keep doing the kind of numbers you did with Frank Martin. And rumor has it, the numbers weren't very good. That it's not the 350,000 that Dan Raphael reported. Bullshit. And that the real number for the fight is a lot more modest. <laughs> Hence, all of a sudden, they want to fight Vasil Lomachenko, a more familiar face at lightweight than Frank Martin. But Vasil Lomachenko's out for the rest of the year. He's gone fishing. He's out. And according to Kenny Ellis, Shakur Stevenson is in. Are we supposed to take it from him? Can he be trusted? I don't believe him. I don't believe this fight is going to happen. Though if by some chance it does, I've got Shakur Stevenson. Wide points decision. Shakur's opportunity to redeem himself for what were two lackluster showings. He can make it all better. He can make it all right. If they make this fight and he wins it, if he beats Gervonta Davis. Now, he might do it in boring fashion because the pure boxer versus the boxer puncher, the counter puncher, it doesn't make for the most exciting fight. It's more of a chess match, a tense battle. Like Haney versus Progre? Exactly right. Between Shakur Stevenson's height, length, and his speed, he's going to draw Gervonta Davis out. It'll be Gervonta Davis trying to close the distance like we just saw in the Frank Martin fight. The difference is, this is a better fighter than Frank Martin. Better fitness, better experience, better pedigree than Frank Martin. Shakur Stevenson's gonna get on his bike and stay on his bike the whole night, on his toes, behind the jab, pot-shotting Javante Davis from the outside as Javante tries to get close to him. He's gonna struggle to do that. Javante is the comparatively bigger puncher. He's got more power, but your power don't mean nothing if you can't land. And landing on this guy? Forget it. Eddie Hearn said it best. You lost rounds to Roly Romero. You lost rounds to Frank Martin. But you guys don't think he's going to lose rounds to Shakur Stevenson, who's better than the both of them. He's a more well-schooled boxer. Better physical specimen. Better engine. Better defense. Better everything. The only thing Shakur is missing is power. Power is the one thing he doesn't have, but that's all right. He makes up for it in other areas. And he wins this fight if they make it. But they ain't going to make it. And finally, news broke earlier today that Bob Arum's top rank and Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions have now signed partnerships with Riyadh Season. His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh has announced Golden Boy partnership aimed at bolstering the promotion of top tier boxing events, starting with Virgil Ortiz versus Sergey Bohachuk on August 10th. Top rank partnership designed to continue to drive the promotion of world class boxing events globally, with Riyadh Season to sponsor 12 top rank events in 2024 and 2025. So what does this mean? With Turkey Al Al Sheikh via Riyadh Season, supplementing the effort to continue doing big shows and big fights, big nights for both top rank and golden boy, you could start to see the kind of bipartisanship we've been seeing between Frank and Eddie here stateside. Say between Bob and Eddie or Oscar and Eddie because Eddie's already in bed with Turkey. Now these guys are too. The benefit of having Turkey Al Al Sheikh supplement the effort for both of these promotional outfits, well, it makes a fight like Zerto Ramirez versus Chris Billum Smith a bit more viable because now you have a financier, someone interested in putting on good fights, very good fights, fights that could not otherwise be made. Zerto versus Chris Billum Smith, Zerto versus Jai Opataya. Say at super middleweight, you could make Christian Mobili versus Bektemir Melenkuzia. Think outside the box. Cause Turkey Al Sheikh does. He's all about high quality shows, high quality fights and fights that perhaps would not otherwise be made if not for a generous benefactor. And he is that generous benefactor. So when you see that he's set to sponsor 12 top rank events starting from this year 
into the next one. Maybe some of those events could be, say, a tournament at 126 involving all the champions there, two of which fight under the top rank banner. Alongside Nick Ball, who is with Queensbury Promotions, we already know Top Rank and Queensbury have a great working relationship. So maybe as a result of this, you could do a mini tournament at featherweight to see an undisputed champion crown because now turkey's footing the bill and he can make big things happen make things happen make things happen for top rank make things happen for golden boy though you will notice that the pbc they didn't mention them i don't know if there is an announcement pending because turkey seems interested in bringing everyone to the table everyone into the fray everybody that's out there so maybe in the coming days and weeks it will be announced that the pbc will also be sponsored in part by Riyadh season we'll see though for now at least momentarily they're not but it's a hell of an announcement when you think about it they're going to be sponsoring 12 top rank shows that's in addition to the budget they're already getting from espn rumor has it the top ranks espn deal is going to be up next year and espn may not renew a situation where top rank goes to the zone I wouldn't rule that out. Why? Well, now Top Rank is in bed with Turkey Alal Sheik, and Turkey Alal Sheik just the other day was singing DeZone's praises oh. and how he aspires to make DeZone the global leader in combat sports, all combat sports, not just boxing. So when you think about that and you think about this, that very soon Top Rank's deal with ESPN is going to be up. I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility that they could end up on DAZN, and them going to DAZN wouldn't be bad. Not if you're a boxing fan. You get matchroom shows, Golden Boy shows, top-ranked shows, possibly, all on one platform. One monthly or annual price. That's value for money. How could one platform house that many promotional banners in the same sport? Won't they at times be going head-to-head -head with each other? They still might, sparsely. Though if by some chance all three of those banners were on the same platform, they could work out a schedule where perhaps they don't go head-to-head -head and they fill up the entire calendar for the entire calendar year. Could be a very good thing. It's good news. I look at it as good news. With Turkey sponsor and Top Rank and Golden Boy, the quality of the fights we're seeing, it's going to improve. Bigger fights, better ones. One sport where any fight can be made and anything is possible. I like it.